Hi, welcome to the Cashman Wellness Show. I have a surprise for you today. Normally the show was on uh, preventing uh, diabetes, but today I have with me Dr. John Crawford, who's running in the Republican primary on May the 7th this year. And I thought uh, that you'd like to know something about him. I've only known him for 40 years. <laughs> he's beat up on me in tennis, but I've beaten him a few times. So I know he's very uh, healthy, uh, very honest, uh, and he was always con complaining to me about the, the, the smoking uh, problem in the city years ago. I said, well, John, you got to do something about it. <laughs> so I encouraged him to run for uh, city council. Guess what happened? That's exactly what he did. But now he's running for mayor. So let, let's hear from him. I know he's a fiscal conservative, but let's hear his story from him, what he's got to say. John, you're bet. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for having me, Rudy. Um, I know your show's about health, and we're going to talk about several health issues. Okay. Uh, you brought up the uh, smoking uh, ban that we did years ago. The first one we passed was uh, almost 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And when we did that, that was World War III. I mean, you remember, <laughs> everybody was mad about everything, and there was a lot of, lot of resistance to that, but there were a lot yeah. of people in favor. So we got that passed, and then we actually made it even stronger in uh, 1990, 2007 when we added bars and public uh, clubs and everything. So I, there's no smoking anywhere inside in the city of Fort Wayne. We have the strongest law to prevent secondhand smoke in the entire state and in some, even some whole other states. And if you want to talk about wellness and health, um, about one out of every thousand people in the United States lives in Allen County. So you can easily do figures and figure out how many people would die of this or that. Um, the number of people that die from secondhand smoke, every year in Allen County we reduced about by 50. So 50 people are not dying a premature death from heart attacks, strokes, and cancer from secondhand smoke. And that's been the case for 20 years because of that one ordinance. So there's a thousand people walking around today who would not be walking around without you telling me to get on council <laughs> and putting me through yeah. a lot of getting beat up to pass that ordinance. So there's some people that will hate me forever for that ordinance, yeah. but that's kind of the way it goes. You know, when you do something in politics, there are some people that are always kind of mad at you. My favorite expression in politics is, Friends come and go, and enemies accumulate. <laughs> well, I want to congratulate you on the lies that you say. Something you may not know, and I, I'll bring it up. It also saved the lives of many pets. I know of some uh, pet owners where the dogs died, and I know of one where a parrot died uh, of a tumor they developed in the neck, which was secondary smoke. So you saved a, lo a lot of uh, people, and I thank you highly for that. Very good. Well, you asked about fiscal conservatism. There are several things uh, that we're talking about in the mayoral campaign, and um, I'm a very strong fiscal conservative. I've been that way forever, and certainly since I've been on council. And we've done a lot of things to save the citizens money. Um, we've, I've passed probably more cuts at uh, budget time than any other council person. And uh, recently we eliminated collective bargaining for six uh, city unions. That also was a big fight. Uh, it took a lot of political leadership to get that passed, to get the six votes. The mayor vetoed that. We overrode his veto. Uh, I can show you that saves about $3 million a year, every year, because of that one action. Wow. I mean, that, that's impressive, John. Right. Yeah. And also, another thing we've been trying to do is get a little more of the money out of politics. And we passed something called the pay-to-play ordinance. And and in the state of Indiana, strangely enough, if you're going to build a building, or you, a public uh, building, or you're going to buy a ton of salt, you have to bid it collectively. But Indiana state law for professional services, no collective bidding, uh, no um, bidding is required. So if you just happen to be the mayor of some little town in Indiana, and I happen to be your brother-in-law, and I have an engineering company. I can come, hey, Rudy, listen, uh, here's a $2 million contract for me. Yeah. Would you sign that? And you can <laughs> sign it, and that's it. And we, you know, and there's no rules on campaign donations yeah. or anything. Now, in the city of Fort Wayne, we changed that. You do have to do 
uh, something, some part of bidding for those. But we mm -hmm. also said, if you can only give $2,000 as a corporation to uh, candidates, we're going to also make that true for professional services. So we passed that ordinance. It's the only one in the state. Once again, had to get six votes for that. Once again, the mayor vetoed it because he was getting a lot of donations from companies mm -hmm. that were seeking city contracts. And once again, you can go to the, to the records and you'll see the people that were giving the most donations mm -hmm. were getting the big contracts. Mm -hmm. Now in my administration, that all stops on day one. I don't care who you are, you give me the best contract for the city, best price, best quality, you're my guy. I don't care if you're a Democrat, a Republican, a Rastafarian, it doesn't matter. So those things are things that I will change immediately. Well, I understand, John. I, I fully uh, understand this because I've known you all these 40 years, uh, and I've never questioned one of your line calls playing tennis. <laughs> so I know you're 100% honest, and we've played tennis together all over the world. And I know you're an honest guy. And just think of the when people you know, speak about their taxes and the money spent and, and honesty that's needed in government, I congratulate you when, when m many of us are so pessimistic about government today that right. to have an individual yeah. that's in, in, in tel intelligent, healthy himself, uh, and, and, and promotes right. a healthy community, right. uh, I really that's am impressed. So. And the very first thing before we leave the topic of fiscal conservatives that I will do in 2020 uh, as mayor, we're going to take last year's budget, we're going to throw it out the window. We're going to start with a zero-based budget. We're going to say, okay, uh, what are our priorities? Uh, if it's crime, it's fighting the opioid crisis, if it's public safety, we're going to list our priorities in order. Then we're going to look at the amount of funding we have, and we're going to allocate the funding appropriately to the priorities. That has not been done for 20 years. Wow. So there's things in yeah. the budget yeah. that we're spending too much for. There's some things in the budget we shouldn't be spending anything for. So all that will be started from the ground up again. That's highly impressive, I mean, to... to to think uh, that uh, tax money is being being spent in a thoughtful manner, uh, that that really uh, makes me feel good, honestly. Good. All right. Now, uh, what about the opioid crisis? Okay. Uh, can you? Well, let's. You let's we hear about in the newspapers all the time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and uh, give us your thoughts on that. All right. Well, um, we just had a crime summit at the uh, city council on February the fifth. We talked about our increases uh, in homicides last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an 8% increase in violent crime in Fort Wayne in la the last year in 2018. And uh, almost a record number of homicides. It's all fueled by illegal drugs, and people often get into illegal drugs first by getting on opioids. And you know that as well as anybody because you led the charge on that a few years ago before people realized it was getting to be a big problem and you were kind of like a voice in the wilderness for a while. You kept talking about it, and nobody was listening for a while till all these people started dying, and now everybody in the state's talking about what you were talking about before anybody. Well, I thank you for that, because cause you know I went and wrote three books about it <laughs> and, yeah. and took the yeah. government leaders uh, to the pain centers right. and pharmacies and tried yeah. to get them to do something, and, right. and, and but finally, they have, and I thank you for, and now, for bringing that up, because you had to listen to all that <laughs> when I was starting to do it. No, he, Rudy educated me, and I prodded him on. But and the, that, the opioid crisis now is huge. Uh, we had 127 overdose deaths in uh, Allen County in 2017. We had 102 as of January of this year in 2018, but we're, that number will increase because toxicology studies yeah. are still pending. Yeah. So that number is unacceptable, and it's not necessarily the people you think are dying. The most, a the most common drug overdose in Allen County is a middle-aged, Caucasian, white male, in the prime of his life, prime earning and everything. People that you don't think are addicted are addicted. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what happens is they get on um, some type of opioid or something, maybe they had a surgical procedure, an injury, yeah. and they take it and take it, and about 8% of people are going to get addicted. And then all of a sudden, they get cut off of their pills, and they can't figure out any way, and all of a sudden, they're on street drugs. And they get mm -hmm. on heroin, mm -hmm. and then away we go. 
And uh, that's what's leading to all the drug dealers and the gangs and the shootings. So one of the things, the advantages of being a doctor running for office is we understand the science of all this. In other words, I understand how uh, drug addiction works. The standard of care these days is medication-assisted treatment. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if you're going to be on heroin, I wish you weren't on methadone or suboxone or some of these other drugs, but if you have to go on methadone to gradually taper off, well, you're not going to get AIDS from IV drug use. You're not going to get hepatitis C. Uh, if you're getting the methadone through an approved treatment, you don't have to buy it from a street dealer. You don't have the drug dealer fighting and shooting another drug dealer. So the medication-assisted treatment and quality treatment centers are what we need here in Fort Wayne. We don't have enough. And so we, obviously funding is always a problem. There's some state funds, some federal funds. We have an opioid task force that is working on it. Uh, should I become mayor, another advantage of being a doctor, we can convene groups. We can bring the medical groups together with the political groups together in a way no one else can. And I really appreciate that because it'll take a physician's knowledge really to get this going because lack of knowledge is part of this epidemic that I've seen. Right. I see marijuana coming maybe this way, for example. And if you're mayor, I know you will step up to bat and and, and, right. and do what you uh, can with it. And, so tell and me a little on bit. The, on the crime, yeah. though, let's, before we leave that, yeah. in addition to just working, the, if we get less people on drugs, we'll have less drug dealers and less crime. But another problem we have here in Fort Wayne is witnesses, okay? Mm -hmm. You can have somebody get shot right in a parking lot with 10 people standing around and yeah. nobody saw anything because they're afraid to be a witness. They're afraid of reprisals from the person who did the killing. Um, so we need more witness protection. But another thing, high-tech thing I want to do is install high-tech surveillance cameras in high-crime areas. Um, that's been done in many cities and many countries. Uh, in London, for example, mm -hmm. there's one high-tech camera for every 14 people. Wow. And Scotland Yard, yeah uses closed circuit TV footage in 95% of their solved murders. Mm -hmm. Figuring out, oh, this car went just left after the murder. There's all kind of ways you can use it. And uh, around, there's a little uh, suburb close to Chicago, Inglewood, Illinois. And they installed a lot of high-tech cameras and a lot of other high-tech stuff. Mm -hmm. And that, they looked at it a year later, 52% decrease in shootings and violent crime and it was the biggest decrease in any of the area in Chicago. So, but you got to do it right. Yeah. The problem is you can't just put a camera up. You have to have the infrastructure. You have to have the ability to get those images into the police area, com maintaining the chain of evidence. You have to have ways of monitoring it, and you have to have ways of um, storing it and using it well. And you can even couple it with artificial intelligence. Like, say I've got a camera, and I've got it looking at an apartment complex. And nothing's happened yet, but I've got it set with artificial intelligence. Well, gosh, there's three or four or five guys just standing around in front talking to each other. Looks like maybe a drug deal. And that will Im immediately tag that and call 911 and have the police just go, you know, go see what's going on. So mm -hmm. there's ways you can even maybe prevent crime with this, too. And just a lot of fascinating things. There was a story recently in Chicago about a, uh, did you follow that Smollett case, Jeff? Yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like that may well be a hoax, okay? Mm -hmm. And they had ways of, the way they could tell all that, they could follow all these people on cameras from the time they started this and where they got this and everything to where... They pretty much know exactly what happened the whole time and know that a lot of that wasn't true that they were talking about. Well, I'm, I'm glad you, you're stepping up to bat to do something about a very serious problem. I yeah. mean, uh, I'm concerned a little bit about the amount of homelessness uh, downtown. Maybe you could uh, address that yeah. for a minute. But I'd like to remind you for a second that uh, I don't know how many years ago now that you and I in Pizza Hut brought Chief Bratton to town, the That's chief right. of police, yeah. who was having great success in New York City, uh, 
John and I, we forked up 1500 bucks a piece yep. in Pizza Hut and brought him to town for a couple of days, uh, which did our police uh, uh, a yeah. lot of good. So they show us our passion, and we'll, we spent our own private money to do right. it. And, and from, that, from that, from having Chief Bratton here, yeah. we had a crime summit, yeah. and we talked about things just like we did recently. And from that one meeting, uh, Chief Bratton at, uh, in New York City had reduced murders from 3,000 a year to 600 a year or something. But one of the things he was doing is something called CompStat, which means computer statistics to follow mm -hmm. crime. Mm -hmm. That was new back then. Yeah. And because of the meeting we had and bringing yeah. Chief Bratton here, the Fort Wayne Police Department started using CompStat. It's that now. And, and, and we've been using uh, it for 20 years. Uh, thank you, uh, because I, I asked you if you contributed 1,500 bucks. And he did, <laughs> sure. and, and I, I didn't know the follow-up. They're still using it today. Absolutely. That's, that's right. just uh, fantastic. Now, let's talk about economic development of the city, uh, which, of course, uh, we're all interested in, uh, the jobs and how good are we going to live here. I mean, I personally, you know, would really like to see uh, what your vision of the f future is mm -hmm. and the river development and the right. stadium development, which you were part of. Let's hear about that. Well, let's go back a few years. Uh, the hardest vote I ever took on city council was for uh, Harrison Square and the baseball stadium. 65% mm -hmm. um, of people were angry at me for making that vote because they d thought we didn't need it, we already had a baseball stadium, people wouldn't come downtown for baseball. All these things we heard, you actually were in favor of it. Um, but many people, in including yeah. Marsha, my wife, were angry at me, saying it was a stupid idea. But now, 80% of the people realize it was a good idea, and that's <laughs> really what brought the downtown yeah. back to life. And those kind of votes are votes that sometimes you won't know if you made the right vote for 10 years. Yeah. But yeah. because of that, we have the Ash Building, Cityscape Flats, Randall Lofts, Superior Lofts. We wouldn't be talking about doing riverfront electric works without getting the momentum started. And one other distinction I'll make, should I survive the primary, well, if I'm running against Mayor Henry, Mayor Henry was not in any office in 2007 when I voted for the baseball stadium. Yeah. He had absolutely nothing to do with the initiation mm -hmm. of that. That was the hard vote. Uh, he had been defeated for council by Tom Didier, so he was mm -hmm. not in any office whatsoever. So, you know, some of the momentum that the present mayor is claiming credit for he really didn't start. I gotcha. And yeah. the other thing, that has led to the riverfront, okay? Yeah. Now, riverfront develops another thing I've been in favor of, and I, I was the one on council to push it and get the funding, and now that's what's happening. And uh, what do you think, uh, how long, how many years do you think it will take before we'll see some pretty good benefits from the riverfront? Oh, probably pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have the first phase, the promenade will be done this year. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of a public area, park kind of area, mm -hmm. but then that sets the phases for phases two and three mm -hmm. where we'll have a lot of private development. That's, so, where, that's where we get to pay off. So in my lifetime, I'll see oh, all of absolutely. It. But I remember how carefully you thought about the stadium because I remember I brought it up to you and I was in favor of it. He said, I'll let you know, Rudy, when I've decided. And he, and he took his time and, uh, about, over a few months and he says, uh, Rudy, I'm for it. Yep. And, and look at the payoff that's been. It was a, you, th that you uh, deliberate about a problem right. and study all aspects of right. it. I have always found yeah. uh, uh, that uh, you don't. You're not impulsive. No, you and you know yeah. you and I know in medicine, you yeah. better have the data before you make your decision. Yeah. So we're always being being from medicine and a scientific approach. It's kind of unique in politics. Yeah. You know what. The old expression, yeah. in God we trust, from all others we require yeah. data. And yeah. if you don't have all the numbers, you may not be making the right decision. But Electric Works was another hard economic development decision. We just voted on that. Yeah. And we had to come up with a certain amount of public money for the developers to then go ahead and try to get their leases. And they're still ongoing with that. But if that project goes, it will be incredibly beneficial to the city. There's still some ifs on that. but. We did assemble the public money, and I was a leader on council. On yeah, that can also. you describe what do you think we're seeing in elect uh, over, over there at GE, say, oh, five, ten years from now? What it look oh, yeah, like? If it gets going, a big part of it is um, uh, about 90,000 square feet are developed to encouraging entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. New companies, 
We want to grow some new companies. That'll and come from out of town and... New, out of town or grown right here. Yeah. And uh, some of these same uh, type of developments that have been done by this developer in other cities have led uh, uh, companies you know, like uh, uh, Under Armour. That, yeah. that, that developed yeah. in one of their things. It's a huge business now. See, yeah. we need not only to bring outside business, we need to grow some of our own, too. And that, that's going to that encourage entrepreneurs that. Entrepreneurs step up through capitalism right. And, right. and establish uh, companies, things they dream up right now, and, and there's the space. And also, the biggest part of all yeah. this downtown strategy yeah. for economic development, uh, the strategy has been to try to fix a way that we can draw young people with the skills for the jobs yeah. of the future. Yeah. Uh, I've been recruiting doctors for 30 years. The last three I recruited, one of the first few questions was, what's downtown like? I want to live downtown. Another question, what, what's Fort Wayne's trail system like? Yeah. Now, you and I know doctors 30 years ago would, did, yeah. didn't care about any of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, they only want to know how much money they're going to make and when they're going to be on call. But the young people are looking for a place to live, not just a place yeah. to work. That's uh, the strategy. Yeah, I'd like to ask you about collab collaborative leadership. But before you say that, uh, I, I would like to compliment you because, you know, I study wellness, I go to the national sure. conventions, uh, and, and it's very clear if the leader of a company or if the leader of a government, like the mayor, for example, himself is healthy yeah. and practices right. great health habits, which I know you do, mm -hmm. the whole city is more likely to become a healthy city. People will be uh, uh, eating uh, right, they'll be jogging more, they'll be bicycling more, mm -hmm. uh, and when people are looking for it, when you say, wow, that's... Why I want to come. Right. So could you tell us about people you have to cooperate and oh. work with well, and your experience in council? My approach has always been to try to work with other people and get things done. Yeah. Yeah. And because of that, people know that about me. And many of our local leaders are endorsing me because they know I'll work with them and to get things done. And I think that's a little bit lacking in our present administration. They don't get along that well with the county. They don't, the president, mayor, and administration doesn't even get along that well with city council. The, yeah, yeah. The, the relationship is not great. So that could be a lot better, and I, I will make it so if, should I become mayor. Yeah, and th this uh, is appreciated. I noticed uh, that you do cooperate a, a great deal, and you have things planned. I noticed when <laughs> something, uh, uh, they're trying to overrule you, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and the veto is set up, you already have the votes counted <laughs> to pass the project. Uh, that you study things uh, uh, very uh, well. So how's the campaign going? We are mounting the most elaborate, multi-dimensional, multi-tiered campaign in the history of Fort Wayne. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're going to win, <laughs> yeah. but we will leave it all on the field. Yeah. I've been knocking on doors and listening to citizens since June. As of this morning, I've knocked on 7,742 doors myself. <laughs> and I only do about 12 doors an hour. So you do the math. Yeah. It's a lot of walking, but it has made me a better candidate. I can tell you what's on people's minds. I can tell you what they want. My first question is, I want to listen to you. Tell me what's important to you to make Fort Wayne a better place if I become the next mayor. And sometime yeah. I'll hear about crime. Sometime I'll hear about roads. Sometime I'll hear about something I didn't really know about. So it has made me a better candidate, and I hope that pays off. But we're doing all the usual advertising. I trust you've seen some of my signs around town. Cause I'm gonna For give, years. I'm going to give you a vision check later if you have not seen one of my signs, because I, I work hard at all aspects of the campaigning. You yeah. still don't know if you're going to win, yeah. but at least you have the satisfaction you did everything you could. I did notice playing still tennis, tennis with you on a regular basis, that you'll come into the tennis building right off the road. He still has the outfit on that he wore <laughs> with some of these uh, ice days. He has cleats on his feet. He's trying to tell me, really get some cleats. It's too slippery out there. Absolutely. Uh, and and uh, that he actually, to describe it further, because he tells me, that he's actually knocking on the doors of the people and, fa and, and, and speaking, have any questions. And he is right now willing to meet with anyone I know that wants to meet with him. Uh, for example, 
I take tap dance lessons, yes. And my instructor, uh, husband, is the head of a, a fireman's union, I think, and they're going to gather a group of people from inside the city at the tap dance studio, uh, and, and John is volunteered to speak with them, and they may be at the moment at a, the opposite party. But, but, but when he said, you mean he'll talk to us, he'll answer our question? Yes, I know, and John's agreed to do that. So, uh, in summary, uh, uh, why should a person vote for you, John? All right. Well, I, I'd like to address the people at home on this one. Um, I could tell you a lot of stuff, but I really just want to talk to you from my heart. When you run for mayor, it is very hard, and it's, it's downright scary. Uh, it wakes me up at the middle, middle of the night sometime. I'll look across the room and look at my camera, with, I mean my clock, with those glowing red numbers saying 3 a.m., and you start thinking, and you think, well, can anybody be the mayor that this great city really deserves? And as I think about it, I remember all the experiences I've had on city council. I remember when I first got on city council, I was lucky enough to have Don Schmidt be my mentor, best city councilman ever. It took me two years learning from him before I thought I could do the job of city councilman well. I remember all the hard debates we had on smoking ordinances and baseball stadiums that were lessons in political leadership. I remember all the uh, local leaders that I know and have worked with, and they know I'll work with them well in the future. That's why they're endorsing me instead of my opponent. I remember all the teeny little details I had to learn about Fort Wayne ordinances and Indiana law to be able to write legislation well. And I know there is no way that I could have walked into the mayor's office without all that learning curve and all that experience and do the job as well as I can do it today. My opponent is very audacious in believing that he can, but it is just plain risky to consider voting for a mayor someone with zero political experience. Uh, he would be doing on-the-job training for the most important job in Fort Wayne. The reason I want you to consider voting for me is I know that I can walk into that mayor's office on day one in 2020 and do the job and do the job well. So that's why I'm asking for your vote tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Crawford. I'm so happy I had you uh, on, on this show and I can certainly vouch uh, for his honesty, his uh, persistent, uh, he's in great health. I think he'll uh, economically uh, help this uh, city. Uh, and also, I think, of course, what interests me, uh, considering <laughs> I'm really a, a wellness doctor, that he will step uh, in my direction and see whatever he could do as mayor to improve the, the health of, of the uh, 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 city. And I really appreciate you uh, coming here uh, today. You know, I'm backing you all the way uh, uh, because uh, when you ran these things to city council, a lot of times you'd bounce it off of me a little bit to see what I th thought about it. <laughs> I would always see these things happening. You were a man of, of your word, inability. You got things done. And, and your summary is now about the detailed knowledge that a person needs versus a person who's never been at city council, I don't see how they could be mayor. Because cause this, this, this uh, <coughs> myself, for example, <laughs> no way I, I could do it, no less uh, anybody else. So thanks so much uh, for coming. Well, Rudy, I and want to it, thank you it, for all the kind words. It, and since you're supporting me this much, I'll be asking you for another check after we leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, th thanks so much. Bye.